Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, Since Hardware Tech in 10. Uh, today, in 10 minutes, I'll go over the new X79S-UP5-Wi-Fi. This board features SAS as well as ECC memory support, and that is because it's not using the usual X79 chipset, but instead the C606 chipset from Intel, which is a server-based chipset. It has eight SAS onboard connections as well as a 12-watt TDP, and so Gigabyte takes steps to combat that heat with a much larger heatsink array on this board compared to the first generation X79 boards. This is a second generation X79 board from Gigabyte and with that comes Ultra Durable 5. Ultra Durable 5 is all about these IR3550 60 amp power stages. Not only that but you also have 60 amp inductors and chokes right there and there and these 60 amp chokes allow 60 amps of currents. If you don't have 60 amp chokes but you are still have 60 amp power stages you can't buy you can't push 60 amps through each choke uh, even though the MOSFET can do it, or else you'll flood the core of the inductor with magnetic flux and you'll short it and you'll burn the MOSFETs out. So your inductor basically has to support the current output that you are aiming for. And if it doesn't, then you're not going to get that kind of current output. Anyways, that's not very important right now. Uh, here we have three-way SLI crossfire support. Three-way digital PWM means the memory, the CPU IO, CPU SA, CPU V core, and both memory controllers are all powered by digital PWMs, and that is how it is here. Uh, then we have 3D power, which is a new digital PWM circuitry, which is actually digital PWM circuitry. And we have the uh, three-way digital uh, BIOS, three-way... 3D BIOS. We also have a Wi-Fi card here. So let's move on to the accessories real quick. Here we have uh, two connectors for Wi-Fi antennas. Here we have a, a brand new Wi-Fi uh, controller. Uh, this is a brand new controller from Gigabyte. It's a little smaller than the rest and its internal connector is just a small little USB header which divided by this cable right here. Six SATA 6 gigabytes per second cables. You can also use them on the SAS. Uh, you have a two-way SLI, two-way crossfire bridge, as well as a three-way SLI bridge. CDs all go here. Um, you have your USB 3.0, 3.5 inch bay, uh, typical for high-end gigabyte ports, which is a nice thing to have, though. Uh, and your I/O connector right there. A bunch of CDs, manuals, all the goodies right there. All right, now let's take a look at this baby board. The board's blue is pretty nice looking. You can take a look at the final product there. Well, I put away this box. <laughs> um, so the motherboard has a nice blue uh, vibe to it. Uh, blue and gray heat pipes from this heat sink goes right into here, as well as a heat pipe from here to here. This board is extremely heavy, okay? One of the heavier boards I've had to deal with. Um, I think this heatsink carries a lot of weight to it. Uh, this is actually pretty low profile. There's no fan. Uh, however, how is it able to combat that heat? This heatsink's sole purpose is not connected to this one, okay? So VRM is cooled here. Uh, they're very cool running power stages, so it's not even going to matter. You don't even need active airflow over the VRM on this motherboard uh, compared to all other X79 motherboards. However, here, this heatsink doesn't cool anything other than the PCH. So basically this is add-on cooling for the PCH and it won't really transfer heat anywhere else because it's not connected to the memory VRM. All right, so let's go over it. And this Tekken 10 might be a little longer than 10 minutes because I want to get over everything on this board. I have a screwdriver in my hand. You're probably wondering why. And I'll get to that in a little bit. First of all, let's go over some of the general features. Power button here, reset switch here, and you're probably wondering, where's the clear CMOS button? OC button to 4 gigahertz right here. All right? And you either push that in, or you don't, and it'll turn green. Dual BIOS switch right here. Um, yeah, and then clear CMOS. Only thing missing from this board is a postcode display, which is pretty kind of sad they don't have it, or voltage read points. But this is not a, really an overclocking board as it is a uh, server chipset board. I'll test out this overclocking, and if it's really superior in overclocking, then I will recommend it for overclocking. Anyways, it does have PCI slot, so I can use my postcode display, which is PCIe. Uh, four USB 3.0 in the back provided by a VLI controller here. Uh, there's no hubs on this board. Uh, Intel native USB 2.0 dual NIC. Uh, this one is Intel and this one's Realtek. Uh, the Intel's native. Toslink 7.1 surround sound. ESATA, two of them here. 
and uh, one of these is a USB port as well I think uh, this one is and um, this is a uh, USB 2.0 port and this is 1394A two more Intel USB 2.0 ports and PS slash 2 this is almost perfect for a server but let's say you don't really want to spend a premium price on server products instead you'll be willing to spend a little bit more than consumer price and that's what this board is for um, it's very gorgeous uh, the heat sinks really look nice this will make great for a blue and black themed motherboard uh, case uh, so you have the socket here you have 8 plus 1 plus 1 uh, for the CPU and then you have one face for each set of four dims um, all the power stages for the CPU and the memory are not only all digital but there also are all IR uh, power stage um, the memory the VCC IO I mean the VCC SA and the other memory they all use 40 amp power stages and uh, all of these use 60 amp power stages alright so you have the PCIe layout here now this PCIe layout is a little different than others, okay? Gigabyte wanted to provide you a 4X slot, which is this one, and they want to provide it with PCI 3.0 because they know a lot of server guys, they use uh, PCI Express 4.0 cards uh, and PCI X4X cards that want 3.0 capability. These are brand new cards that uh, need more bandwidth because they're dealing with better um, USB 3.0, a lot of it, or they're dealing with a lot more uh, uh, faster drives, stuff like that. So PCI 3.0 is warranted. And that PCI 3.0 is not going to come from the X79 PCH. The X79 PCH only has 4 uh, 8x of uh, PCI 2.0 for extra connectivity like your dual NICs. Each use one. The VIA 4-port controller uses one. Etron check controller here uses one. As well as your um, Marvel controller for the back panel. as ESAT. So what do you do? You take it from the CPU. Well, lucky us, the CPU here is 40 PCIe X lanes, right? So most manufacturers have basically gone and routed. If they only have this board, doesn't support full way, they have routed basically, you have a 16X here, and they'll do maybe 16X here and an 8X here. But that's not what Gigabyte does, no. Gigabyte puts 16X to this slot, to this slot directly. This is a full 16X slot, okay? It's wired directly to the CPU. The lanes from this slot never change. Then you take 4X slots and wire them right here. This 4X always is 4X. No other PCI configuration. This will always be 16X. This will always be 4X. And they'll both be PCI 3.0 if your CPU supports it, which they do. Anyways, so in this 8X and this 16X go on switches with these PCI 3.0 switches right here. Each one of these controls two lanes to switch 8X from here to here, here to here. So if you use both of these or use all three of these, you can do three-way SLI, 8X, 16X, 8X, 8X. Or if you do two-way, you do 16x, 16x, okay? However, this is always 4x, this is always 16x, this will always have at least 8x, and 8x will switch between these two. Now you can see this on the back. And you're wondering why the heck did Gigabyte do that, because this is pretty kind of low to the ground. Well, the thing is, first of all, this will allow for a triple slotted, dual triple slotted cards, but that's not what they were thinking of when they designed this. What they were thinking of is that many people might want to run two GPUs and then a PCI 4X. They want this 4X to work for some extra connectivity, and so that's why the PCI layout is like that. Um, yeah, it might be a little odd to some people, uh, but Gigabyte does pretty things pretty much unique to themselves. Uh, here we have a 1X slot comes from the PCH, and then this PCIe is actually native to X79 Pattsburgh, and uh, this VIA controller and this slot both run off the PCIe bus. So let's remove the heat sinks and see what it's got underneath. I've removed some of the screws. There is a bracket on the back here uh, to keep uh, everything sturdy. Uh, it's really not needed. I kept telling Gigabyte, please put brackets on your motherboards when you use backside MOSFETs. Well, the thing is, now they're using power stages, there's no need for backside MOSFETs. Uh, so this is pretty cool. Um, here we have, we're taking off the heat sink, and this is a pretty, pretty stable heat sink. And there's actually a thermal pad in between here and here to, I guess, not short out anything on the board. Ah, the board is so much lighter. <laughs> so, here's the heatsink, right? Just like I said, there's no connection here. This doesn't have any heat pad because these two just screw to the board. Um, here we have a heat pad here, which is uh, touching the IR3550 power stage, as well as a PCH here, which you're using paste. Um, 
a little bit going on my heat sink. Hey, my uh, my screwdriver. Uh, so using paste here, I can actually see the imprint of the uh, chipset right there. Uh, so the blue coloring, this is a multi-piece heat sink, so the cooling is actually going to be really good with this heat sink. Uh, it is working really well. The heat pipe is 8-inch heat pipe, and the blue color and the styling is just fabulous. I really like it. So I'll move the heat sink to the side because it's really not part of what I want to show right now. Here's the motherboard. Really badass, right? Each one of these is an IR3550, capable of 60 amps at 10 watts. Um, that's actually doable. Uh, the PCH here is 12 watts. Uh, so this heat sink can actually do with active cooling, but you really don't need 60 amps per phase. Uh, these, well actually these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 phases are for the CPU. I don't know why this is done in a different direction. But this plus this capacitor and I think the lettering on this power stage might mean this is for the VCC IO. Uh, this is definitely VCC SA. You can see the size. I don't know if you can see size of the power stage here. You can see how it kind of only fills half or maybe uh, three-fourths or two-thirds of the copper padding here and that's because that's enough room for a full uh, IR3550 and these are bigger than um, this is actually PWM but this is the power stage. See they're much wider than these which are only 40 amps and these are all 60 amp. Uh, so that's interesting to note. So if you ever see these power stages and they're remarked, you can kind of use one of these boards, a nice up-close picture, to gauge what kind of power stage it is. Uh, both 40 amp here for all these four dims, 40 amp here for all these four dims, 10 amps per dim. That's a very high current capability, um, even without a heat sink. Uh, then you have your power stages here. This is capable of up to 6 times 6, I mean 6 times 8, which is 480 amps. That's just way more than you'll ever use. Uh, you may be looking at 200 amps, which is half the capability here, and that's going to run really cool. Maybe one or two watts per power stage, and there's only eight of them, so it's going to run cooler than your PCH. That means you can use this with a, excellently with a water-cooled system, and that the VRM will not overheat. And I'll even do tests for you guys to show you this phenomenon. These are state-of-the-art power stages, state-of-the-art inductors. These are actually custom-made. Um, and you won't find this on any other X79 board. Marvel SC9172 provides two ESA to the back. Uh, VLI 800, four port USB 3.0. Fresco FL1009, two port USB 3.0 to the side, angled right here. I love the positioning of this controller. Dual BIOS, 64 megabits a piece. Dual BIOS switch in the back right here. Um, you have a via VT6308P, which is a two port 1394A controller, uh, one port here and one port on the back. The native password in this PCH provides a lot of USB 2.0, I think something like 14 of them. Uh, provides no native USB 3.0, that's why you have the two controllers for it. Provides ace, eight sets of SAS 3 gigabytes per second, two sets of four, made of four total, Intel SATA 3 gigabytes per second and two SATA 6 gigabytes per second ports. Uh, just like we said, we said switch here. There's also clear, clear seamless header here, front panel headers, um, system fan three, system fan four, both three uh, pin fan headers, four pin fan header for system fan one and system fan two right here. Um, and these are four pin and CPU fan is right here. So you technically can get one fan here and another fan here if needed, but this is basically for the back panel and this is going to the front. This can also go to the front and this might do a side case fan or whatever. Um, you can figure that out. Um, now IR Digital PWM, this is eight phase VDRM and there's no doubling whatsoever. Now this is something Gigabyte stayed true to in their last UP5 series and I love it. I think it's the best, all right? You have an IR3563 or 64, uh, IR63, yeah, 63A, there's no such thing as 64, 64 is I think only six phases, 65, I mean 3563A is an eight phase true controller, it's eight plus zero, all right, so then you need an extra one PWM here, you need its own PWM for the memory here, its own PWM for the memory here, and its own PWM for the VCC SA here, VCC IO, so you need four PWM um, sets, all right, so then you have two, um, where's the other one here? You have one here and one here. These are identical IR3570, three plus two phase PWMs. 
they each have dual they're each dual output so plus three phases <laughs> what I really find interesting though is the gigabyte is not is wasting so many PWM outputs from here they could have easily done three phases here three phases here and two phases for each of these without fuss except they're using extremely high quality and high power output power stages and to be really true and honest to you there is no reason ever that you would need more than one of these per what they're doing um, so basically you're using one here and the other one of, from this PWM is going to the system agent here. This PWM, one of them is going to the VCC IO here and the other one's going to the other DDR here. They're all on their separate rails on the PWM which is something amazing and fantastic. Um, yes, yeah, some PWM channels are wasted but it's much better than doubling PWM channels. I hate when the people double PWM channels. Uh, single phase uh, for here for the PCH actually this must be yeah a single phase dual inductor um, three MOSFETs made by Renaissance and a Realtek single phase PWM you have an ICS clock generator here you have an Intel PCH a P physical layer device that goes with the integrated Intel NIC here as well as a Realtek um, 8111F I believe or E I forget which one um, and uh, you have an IT-A725E that gives you all voltage, fan, temperature control, monitoring, stuff like that. I think I've gone over everything on the motherboard thus far. Um, just take a look at how much SAS this is, because this is really cool, right? That's just so cool, right? So many SAS ports. And the back right here, uh, there are no ICs on the back. Gigabyte has done an excellent job with this motherboard. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them and please visit us at www.sidhardware.com for the final preview slash review. Alright, thank you for watching today. Bye-bye. Um,